Hey everybody, this is Lewis from WP Academic, and today I wanted to show you a more professional approach to using advanced custom fields. And why do I say more professional? Well, a lot of people will use the functions that are caked into ACF, like the field or get field or get subfield. Now, while these are fine for beginners, there are two downsides to this approach. The first downside is pretty simple. You'll start to see that your website will slow down when you query your fields one by one throughout your page, especially when you have a lot of fields that you're calling on a single page. Uh, every time you're calling, for example, get field, the plugin is actually going to go through three or four different functions just to return your data. The second downside is a bit more serious. If someone were to deactivate the plugin or if there's an update failure, then the front end of your site is actually going to break. So let me just show you what I mean by that. I have a page here that's using some advanced custom fields to output the data. Let me go ahead to my plugins page and just deactivate the plugin. So before refreshing, just notice that we have content that comes below here. And once I do refresh, you'll notice that the page stops outputting any data. Why is that? Well, because there is a PHP error. So let me just go to my WP config file and turn WP debug on to true. Refresh the page and you notice that we get a fatal error and it's a call to a function called get field. And the reason this error is occurring is because the function get field only exists inside that plugin. So when you're trying to utilize that plugin when it's deactivated, um, then it's not going to find those functions. So uh, let me show you a more professional way of doing this on the way that I use on my websites. So let me go ahead first and I'll reactivate my plugin so things look like they're back to normal. And I'll go ahead and just show you my setup real quickly, just the fields that I'm uh, calling so that you can follow along a bit more easily. So I have this field group and I have just a simple text field and then I have a repeater field. And that repeater field just has a simple text field inside of it. So if I go to my page, I have these fields down here. And you can see my content in there. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna be using a short code to output my data. Um, this will work the same as if you have your uh, functions being called from a page template. It would work the exact same way. So this is the uh, amateur way of doing stuff where you're using the fields from uh, advanced custom fields. So I'm just going to show you the um, what I'll call the professional way. Professional way. So there are two ways to do this. I'm just going to show you the first real quick. Um, so I'm just going to grab the page ID. And the first way of doing this is to use a WordPress core function called get post meta. So instead of test field here, the way you're calling this with get field, we're just going to do get post meta. And then this requires us to put the page ID. Then the field is just the second parameter. And I'm just going to say uh, new post meta field is test field. Let me go ahead and refresh this page. And we see that this is echoing out using the get post meta function. And this is using the advanced custom fields function. Now, this works as far as uh, your front end of your site won't break if the plugin gets deactivated but it doesn't really help so much with the site speed because you're still just calling a bunch of get post meta uh, functions throughout your page. So let me just uh, show you an even, even better approach. So I'm going to show you a new function called, well, it's not new, but it might be new to you, called get post custom. So I'm just going to say page custom fields equals get post custom. ID. And um, you can actually, if you want to get the custom data from any other page, you would just put that ID here. So if I want to just 
grab it from the current page. In this example, I'm just using the page ID of the current page. So let me just do a uh, var dump of the uh, post custom on this page, and you'll see where I'm going with this. Refresh. Now you'll see it returns a multi-dimensional array. Uh, some of these are just private keys in the backend. Others are the fields that we actually want to query. So now instead of querying uh, multiple database calls, we actually just need to fetch the value uh, from the array key here. So let's do this in a store one of these in a variable. So let's say test field is page cf, which is a an array now, and we just want to grab this array key, and it's a multi-dimensional array. So notice how test field, it's always the first key in the array that has the value that we would want. So I'm just going to type 0. So I'll echo out test field from uh, custom or from post custom is test field. Refresh the page. So the test field from post custom is the same as that. So that's working correctly. Let me go ahead and var dump the uh, page CF again, just to show you how we're going to work with repeater fields. I'm going to be echoing that out below here, so I'll just add a br tag. Now, with repeater fields, if you recall, my uh, repeater field was called test repeater. So we see test repeater here, and this will return uh, a count of how many uh, fields or subfields are in there. So in this right here, we see the first is a string that contains the number three. So the way to access these is with a for loop. Notice how in the test repeater, uh, we have test repeater and then the first index, test repeater, the second index, and test repeater with a third index, and we're counting from zero. So let's go into that for loop real quick, and I'll show you how this is done. So we should put uh, test repeater, oops, test repeater count equals HCF test repeater. Okay, so now the amount of subfields, which is three, is stored into this variable here. So we can get rid of this var dump here. And I'm just going to do a for loop. So for, and I could use i as uh, generic as that is, for i equals zero, because we're counting from zero. Well, i is less than the test repeater count. i plus plus. Now, we should do a uh, repeater text equals page cf. So remember, we don't need to call those uh, extra database calls. We're just querying the array that's already output on the page inside of page cf. So we're going to use the syntax here. It's going to be uh, test repeater. And then we're going to add the number. So test repeater. And then the current num iteration is i. And then the subfield name is just the repeater text. And always have a zero to indicate the first index at the end. So we're going to echo uh, repeater text is. text. So uh, this would indicate uh, test repeater underscore zero under, 
underscore repeater text uh, to get the actual field from the database. Let me just go ahead and refresh this now. So we see we have a YouTube tutorial about learning ACF the right way. And I can remove this. And now we have, uh, let's see, remove this test stuff here. So now we have the professional way of doing things down here. And this is the beginner's way. So I can actually just delete this and refresh my page. And now we have a fully functioning way of going about using advanced custom fields uh, that's going to be quicker and won't break if my plugin gets deactivated. Let me just show you what that looks like. So as we can see here, uh, nothing got broken uh, when the plugin was actually deactivated. So you wouldn't have anything to worry about and your client wouldn't have to call and say, hey, I just noticed something's not working on the site. So that's all for me. I hope you found this tutorial insightful. I'm sure there will be people that don't like this approach and they'll come up with some reason as to why they think my approach is not great. And that discussion is of course welcome in the comments. For more tutorials, tutorials like this, uh, feel free to subscribe and let me know what other things you'd like to learn. So thanks and have a great day.